Analysis Layer Android. Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired. So in the last video, we talked about native code and how it fits into the Android ecosystem. And we also looked at an APK that was using native code and talked about how we could find those different native code references inside of our Java code. So in this video, we're going to do kind of the opposite. We're going to look at the native code and see how we can go back and forth between that Java code and our native code and how we can recognize how the native code is called from our Java code and find those corresponding functions in our native code. So I'm going to go back to the sample that we were working on last time and I still have this open up in JDEX. And if you remember, this is the class and I where we defined all of our different native methods. So each one of these methods is going to be implemented inside of our .so file over here, which is going to be our shared object native Linux binary. It's going to be implementing all of this code. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at this .so file. First things first, how do I get this file? I can see it inside of this resources lib.so right here, but how do I actually pull that out so I can analyze it? Because I can't analyze this inside of JDEX. Well, if you remember, Android APKs are actually just a special kind of zip file. So all we need to do is go ahead and extract the contents from it. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, I have my APK, APK cache, which is just generated by JDEX. So I can just right click on this and ignore that. Oops. And I'll go 7-zip and I'm going to extract it to its own folder. So remember, this was just a special kind of zip file. So all of the contents of the zip file will now be in this folder that we extracted with 7-zip. So I can just double click here and I can see, of course, my Android manifest, my classes.dex, uh -oh. that's my Dolvik executable code. So that can be all my classes and method that I, methods that I saw inside of JDEX. But what I'm interested in here is the lib folder. So the lib folder is the system library folder that's going to be checked when an APK is calling system.load library. So inside of this lib folder, we can have support for many different processor architectures. Um, if you find x86, x86-64, ARM64, that means that this APK can run on all of those different target architectures. Now, malware authors will commonly remove support for x86 and x86-64 for a couple different reasons. Firstly, it's more common for reverse engineers to be able to run all of the different x86 systems on their emulators. But secondly, most Android devices are gonna be ARM-based, so you don't really need to include support for all those different processor architectures. Now, in this case, we just have one target architecture that's supported, so this is just gonna run on the 32-bit version of ARM. So I'm going to go ahead and double click and I can see here, here's my .so shared object Linux binary. So how am I going to start reversing this if I can't pull it up in JDEX? Let's introduce a new tool called Geardra. So Geardra is a free disassembler and decompiler that we can get just by downloading the GitHub. There's a bunch of different releases, so you can just go ahead and download from the official site, which I'll link to in this video, and then uh, extract that and install it on your system. But I already have this, so I'm just going to go ahead and open it up. So when we open it up, um, I already have a project created, but I'm going to go ahead and create a new project for this video. So I'm going to do file new project and just give it any name. We're going to call this just native two. Finish here. Then you're going to get a project right here. So now we have our project created. We can just go ahead and dump our binary that we want to reverse engineer and put it inside of here. Click OK. So if you noticed, we had it show up as an ELF file. 
and that's the file type. So it stands for executable and linking format. So this is just like a Linux uh, executable file or library file. So the equivalent in Windows would be like a .exe file or maybe a .dll if it's a library file. But this is just the, that equivalent for an executable binary in Linux. So we've added that. We're just going to hit OK. And now we can see our uh, binary imported. And I'm going to double click on that binary so we can continue to analyze it. Yes, I would like to analyze it. And I'm just going to leave the defaults. Feel free to explore and check anything you're interested in. I'm going to click Analyze. So now we have our view in Geardra. On the left hand side, we can see the actual ARM assembly. And we could take a look at that. But also on the right hand side, which is really convenient and free in Geardra, we can see the decompilation of the code that we're interested in. So quickly, let's go back to our Java code. So we have the Java code right here and we have it declared inside of this class. How are we going to go ahead and find it inside of the native code? Well, there are particular conventions for names in Java code communicating with native code and vice versa that it has to follow. So we're going to go ahead and look for those particular conventions. So if I go over here in my Geardra and I open up my functions, I can see that I have a group of functions here that start with Java underscore. And those are the ones that I'm going to be interested in. So if we go back to our Java code, we can see that the method name that's declared here in our native code is going to be named Java underscore and then the fully qualified method name. So that means it's going to be the package name plus the class name plus the method name all separated by underscores. And then the beginning of that is going to be Java underscore. So if we take this method iz right here and we're trying to find it in our native code, we're going to find a method defined in native code called java underscore s underscore ni underscore iz. So let's go ahead and find this there. See java s ni iz and we can find the corresponding function inside of our native code. So there are some exceptions to this naming convention. This particular APK was dynamically linked, so we can find the corresponding code by looking for this Java underscore naming convention. Now, if this was statically linked, there would be something called called the JNI onload method, but we'll get into that in another tutorial. So for now, we have found our corresponding native code that is called and imported inside of our Java code. So if we want to start analyzing this native code, I won't get into it too much, but we need to know about something called the Java native interface. So what is the Java native interface? It's basically just an interface of classes and libraries that you can use to work as the bridge between your managed code, which is going to be your Java or Kotlin code. So that's going to be those Android classes and methods that are declared inside your APK. So it's going to be how managed code can interface with native code. And remember, native code is going to be your C or C++ code. So you can have Java code interface with native code and other way around as well. So in order to do that, it has to import something called the Java native interface. So if we want to look up any references to the JNI, we can actually look over here at the Oracle documentation. And we can actually see that the JNI is actually just a structure of pointers to methods that we can call inside of our native code. So if I was in my native code and I wanted to call this define class method, all I would need to do is import the JNI.h, which has all of the libraries that I need. And then I would be able to call this class using the pointer to the JNI. Now, inside of my native code, I can see that this first argument here is always going to be a pointer to the JNI ENB. So I can remember that that is always going to be the first parameter that's passed here. Now, unfortunately, Geardra doesn't auto type this about half the time. So I have to type this myself, but I'll remember that this is always the case. 
So if I found my corresponding method, I want to go ahead and apply the types because if I uh, check here and I see the references to this, it doesn't really make much sense because it's calling this plus some offset, which is actually just going to be an offset to that structure that we see right here that's defined, but we can change the type accordingly inside of Deirdre. So the way we're going to import the symbols for the JNI is I downloaded them offline and I'm going to import them into Geardra. So I'll include the link for this inside the comment section of this video. Somebody, somebody has very kindly already supplied all of these for us. So I've downloaded this file myself and now I'm just going to import it into Geardra. So now if I want to import all of the JNI symbols that we downloaded into Geardra, I can just go ahead and click the arrow here, open file archive, and then I've already downloaded that .gdt file right here. I'm going to open that right here and we can see all of the types and symbols that it's defining for us. So I'm just going to now right click on this and I'm going to do retype variable and you need to remember that that first pointer is a pointer to the Java native interface and it's going to be named JNI ENV star. So star is the pointer part. So I'm just going to search for it doing this. And then we have JNI ENV star. So we'll apply that type. So now we can see that this is updated to actually point to one of those JNI methods that we talked about and saw defined over here. So I'm just going to do control F and we can see that was the offset that it was actually pointing to, but now it has been auto-filled to the corresponding method name in the JNI. So if you're using all of these different JNI methods in your native code, you actually have to use this, which you could rename if you want to be. Uh, let's just go ahead and rename that. So I'm going to do call it pointer to the environment P E and B. We could find all references to it and see that every time you're calling one of those methods that's defined in the JNI, you actually have to pass the pointer to the current JNI uh, environment that you've found here. So if I go back to my Java declarations right here, let's remember all of the methods that we've defined. We found the corresponding IZ method. So let's just look at a couple others and make sure that they're all defined in our native code as we'd expect. So let's look at JZ. So remember, we're looking for Java underscore S underscore NI underscore JZ, which is going to be the fully qualified class name. So we'll find it right here. And it looks like we have all of those defined in pretty much the same order, I think, that we have in our Java code. Yes, that's what it looks like. So again, we'd have to reapply the type to point to the Java uh, native interface that we are currently calling here. And we could just go through all of these and uh, fix those. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired. Today we looked at the native code aspect of analyzing an APK that's implementing part of its code in native code. And we took a look at how we could find the corresponding native code that's declared inside of our Java code. We also took a quick look at reversing an application in Geardra and applying the different JNI types and what exactly the Java native interface actually is. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Woo! Okay. Ah! <laughs>